Mike. Good morning. They pay you to go to Bermuda? Well, uh, Mike, we're working. I mean, I, I don't know if you're. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. If you're watching, I can Twitch, see the sweat but... coming down your your brow right now. I yeah, know, I, well, that's I got, the hangover. This is ninety yeah. degrees. <laughs> I, got, I got a little, I got a little burned yesterday. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Just, you need some uh, sunblock, but yeah, I forgot the sunblock. But mm-hmm. um, so, listen, I, I, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, you're you're going down there, and you're you're playing two down there, and heading into the series. You're, I, the prevailing wisdom is you take one of those and it's 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 bonus. So, uh, is is it hard for you to, to be upset about what happened last night? Oh no, oh, oh no no no. You you don't just pass on on an opportunity to put them two in the hole. And they did pass. They were just dreadful last night. I mean, there there were mistakes on every goal that were self inflicted for the most part. And Florida took advantage of it, and they established the physical presence that they wanted to establish and and they took back the momentum of this series I mean that's a big stumble for me can they get it back I guess but I, I didn't like the way the game played out I didn't like the mental mistakes and I just want to point out like if you watch McAvoy lately and we all have it's been tough to watch and Lindholm has you know he had his moment in game seven but it, it's really um it's amazing to me that the Bruins don't have on their staff a, a coach that's a defenseman. I mean, the, you'd think they'd have at least one. They have loaded up with forwards, but somebody's got to teach these guys some of the basics of the game, and, and especially in terms of communication with your goaltender, which seemed to be completely out of whack last night. I well, mean, Curtis, the one, brought that, Curtis brought it up from Jump this morning about Charlie McAvoy. Yeah, well, awful, awful. Yeah, but McAvoy had good company. I mean... I mean, communication so key. Swayman on the first goal went out to play it, and he threw it to Waterspoon, who was on his left. And Forber drifted to the corner, like he was, you know, going to the deli. I mean, he he didn't do anything to get back in position. And Lorenz was completely alone on the redirection. It was a beautiful shot for redirection. But how does how do you have a, a an offensive player standing all alone in front of the net? able to redirect the puck past a pretty defenseless goaltender who was leaky a little bit last night in terms of mental play, I thought. Mike, who do you put it on, the fact that Maurice shuffles the lines and they're not able to respond or adjust to that? Well, I put it on the players. I mean, the best players on, you're supposed to, on your team are supposed to be Marsha, who coughed the puck up all night long. It looked like he, he looked his age last night. You know, he was a major factor in key points in the Toronto series. And last night, you know, couldn't get the puck out of the zone after after a faceoff was won. That led to a goal. Stumbled uh, inside the blue line and failed to clear on another goal. It was it was really hard to watch. Uh, I, watching McAvoy, you know, screen the goaltender yet again, um, making it really almost impossible for Swayman to get a good look at the puck. It was it was a to me, it was a comedy of errors, and not just, you know, they missed an opportunity to do something really special and get a stranglehold on the series. And instead, uh, what they did was hand the momentum back to to the Panthers. Uh, Mike, just for that, did I answer that question, Courtney? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Honestly, yeah. everybody sounds smarter when I can look over Greg and Courtney and see the beautiful water. It just like <laughs> feels like everything works better. But how did you get that gig? Aren't you down on the totem pole? Me? Uh, yes, thank you for bringing that up. Um, oh, I, I actually. Oh. oh yeah. Curtis. No, I, 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 I. Curtis was invited. I was invited. I was unable to go. I, I'm a dad. <laughs> um, so uh, the uh, the final seconds of the second period, should the Bruins go on to lose this series, will be what I will highlight. In that you have Swayman come up huge, two consecutive pad saves. They're unable to clear the puck after the next face-off, and then they let in the goal where McAvoy screened Swayman. That whole five seconds of actual ice time was the killer last night, and maybe for the series. Uh, I, I just thought it was, it was a game to, uh, if you can put it in the bottom drawer and close it, lock it, and throw away the key, that's what you got to do. But this was, it was ugly. It felt ugly to me. It felt like the key players were uh, in absentia. It seemed to me that uh, the key players for Florida stepped up big to Chuck, of course. I mean, is he hateable or is what? It's just like you just want to punch him in the head. And it shouldn't be Pasta that does it, although I give him points for that. And and somehow 
you know, his smirkiness just gets under your skin, but you've got to get past it with, with good performances. Not, you're not going to, you're not going to fight him and feel like you've, you've won the battle. He'll, he'll come right back. So let him smirk and just let him smirk with a three, two loss on his shoulders. That's the only way to get, to get even with him. Well, yeah, but I mean, he's he's chirping uh, all night. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, you're I, falling right into the trap, right? You're yeah, falling right into the trap. Oh, yeah. geez, he's, he's 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 yelling at me. I have to do something. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, stop it. Like, just play the damn game, and then okay, Pasternak at least took the right time to sort of you know set the record straight that he wasn't going to be pushed around by fighting him near the end of the game when it meant really nothing except for macho, right? I mean, what if Postnock got hurt in that thing? Should have yeah. been Maroon, should have been Brazo, should have been, you know, Frederick. Anybody else but but Postnock, as much as I admire the fact that he did it, it was, it was kind of useless, wasn't it? When all said and done? Montgomery said that he considered taking Swayman out when it, they were down 3-1 and then kept him in, of course, till they were uh, a bit later. Do you th wish that it, he had taken him out sooner? I, I don't think Swayman was as pinpoint in his control of his game as he's been before. He made some good saves. Uh, he made some mistakes, especially handling the puck. And when I hear Montgomery say Swayman was terrific, I'm thinking to myself, is he watching the same game as I am? I mean, don't BS me on that stuff. And don't BS your team and don't BS your goaltender. Tell it straight. He was not that good last night. He made some saves, but he also made some really poor decisions and and it, it put his teammates in, in tough situations so okay he had a tough night big deal he's been otherworldly up till now and everybody's going to have a, a night in their, when they're less than otherworldly and last night was Swayman's. do you start him friday though mike i do i i mean I, we're past the uh and Ulmark wasn't exactly you know stellar in his relief <laughs> stint and right. so yeah. i mean just forget about the rotation that we were all talking about for so long and just give it to Swayman and let it ride. And I thought it was a good decision by Montgomery to, to pull him at the time, give Allmark a little work, a little less stress on Swayman's back and, and reset for, for game three. But Mike, my question for Monty is he's sort of been all over the map. You know, obviously they had the calling out of pasta. I was dead wrong. Courtney Cox to Tory, right again, um, about that working, but Last night after the game, he gives the team an out saying they were tired. Like, I, I don't understand that. I, I don't understand it either. You're right. He's, he is all over the map. And it, don't, don't, okay, they were tired. Okay, I can get that. They had a long series and an emotional game won. But you can't, you can't dip into that well. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. They're going to play again tomorrow, right? I mean, they're going to, are they still going to be tired? I mean, what are you going to do? Give, give him a little massage, rub him down on the plane on the way home? I mean, you can't. You just don't put that in. Don't put that in their thinking. You're you're giving them an out. So uh -huh. don't don't tell me something that's not true and and or that is true and then making an, an excuse of it. Last night was if they were tired, okay, then give them the day off and and let them reset for game three. Speaking of tomorrow night, I promised to give tickets away while you're on with us, Mike. Well, so, thank you. Uh, if you are, if, you, <laughs> if you're, if you're caller number nine right now on the contest line, which is six one seven nine three one zero ninety three seven, you get two tickets for tomorrow night at TD Garden. Limited tickets are still available at Ticketmaster.com slash Bruins. So. Uh, so now that they come home, Mike, they haven't been playing their best at home. Are you worried that maybe this thing gets out of control? Uh, I'm worried. I, that that game worried me because of the number of mistakes that they were easily accountable for and self-inflicted. I hate it when I – it's one thing when when another team makes a great play and scores a goal. Um, you're going to make a few mistakes along the way, but this was re repeated offenses – so I, I, I didn't. You never like to see that in a series where somebody just knocks the other team around. And last night the Bruins got knocked around and 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 really looked silly doing it. And I, sometimes the emotional currents make a difference in a series. And I I felt the surge of of a, a sea change last night that will be tough for the Bruins to fight back with. Tired or not, they're going to have to do it.
What, what do you make of all these too many men on the ice penalties? Like you know what? what? In the that's world? that's that's just that's just wrong. I mean, how what is it? how many have they had in this? five in five. the playoffs? The rest of the NHL has four. It's it's absurd. It, now that's that's a co that's both a coaching and player fault. I mean, but communication has to be very clear on the bench. And I've seen the, you know, these thirty second shifts make things difficult because you change so quickly. But that you're supposed to change when the puck is heading into the offensive zone, and especially when the other team has, hasn't had time to go back, retrieve it, possess it, and come the other way. You, and and you, have to, you have to hustle to the bench. I, I watched Postanok and Marsha on a recent shift just like lollygag to the bench from the middle of the ice. you got to give the guy on the bench a chance to change and change properly. He's going to cheat a little bit if he can get away with it. But you got to hustle to get over there. He can't. He can't cheat when you're a zone away from the, from the bench. It's just not going to work, and you're going to get called. I think they've been sloppy. I think it's a player responsibility, and I think when you had this many, it's definitely a coaching responsibility. You should know exactly, you know, who's going next in your lineup, and you should be able to pick out your guy on the ice and know. Watch him hawk eyed when he's coming to the bench, and you know you're going to be able to get a good clean change but they've been sloppy with it they've been lazy with it they've been poorly coached with it and they're paying the price for it so i you've been critical of jim montgomery at times uh on the show is i've also been uh, praiseworthy of him too you have I mean, yeah you have it's called uh, is, fair but when you, <laughs> a little bit more <laughs> on the negative side i think but but um <laughs> is he the kind of guy that you know you curtis brought it up you, you uh, went off about uh trying to use the, the tired factor as an excuse, is he, is he the kind of guy who can deliver uh, the message that needs to be delivered to them about, uh, about flipping the switch here? I, you know, that, that's hard it for me to like say. That, it doesn't yeah. seem like that kind of coach. Well, me. no, we, we saw him with a soft touch for most of last year. He started to change his ways a little bit, and, you know, he calls out, Really call out Postanok. Somebody no. asked him a question about it, and he answered with a he little said, bit he of. He said the effort was great. We just need big plays from him. That's not calling him out. Really. Yeah, no, that was no. So I mean, I, I don't. I, the answer is I don't know. I mean, it's only been it's been this is the second season. This is second critical moment in the playoffs. Um, I, I, I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. I, I don't know how he's going to handle. it. I think they fly back today. And uh, probably no practice, and you know. But it's a time when, in my mind, when he has to be touching every player in the in a communicative way. He's got to be able to, whether it's on the phone, whether it's in person, whether it's at the skate tomorrow. I mean, he's got to he's he's got to play whack a mole because there are a lot of whacks that he needs to make tomorrow. And maybe it's a touch and feel, and maybe not a whack, but he he sh he should be busy. Job security for him. I mean, I, I think everybody uh, breathed a sigh of relief when they got past the Maple Leafs and said, "All right, he saved his job." I mean, as it does it depend how, if they exit. Does it? I, and this is a Hillman drink scenario. But uh -oh. uh, if, if they exit, does it matter how? Does it how how does how does that affect him? I think it. I think it, it matters, and I think there'll be a, an evaluation. I didn't think there would. You know, last year I didn't think there was any question of his return. This year, I mean. After losing some key players, they had a tremendous regular season. They managed to find a way to beat Toronto. Let's save that conversation for the end. For the you yeah. know, I don't the think few... there's a shot in hell, Mike, that they fire him after they get past the first round. Yeah, I think it's unlikely. But I, I mean, if all of a sudden this thing goes down in five, yeah. and they get beat up, um, there might there might be some other considerations to. Uh, for the front office to look at. But I, I, right now, I think we just, we'll see how they respond to this one because I think this was a game that um, was emotionally draining and now they need to find a way to come back with a, an emotional response. Curtis, was he fired in your mind if they didn't get past Toronto? A thousand percent. Okay. That that reaction you saw when Pasta put the puck in in overtime on, what was that, Saturday night of yes, last week? Yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Night. That, that was a guy that was like, holy crap, thank God I have my job. You know, by the way, we we didn't discuss that since that that 
occurred that overtime win. You know, in that game, I saw the Bruins defenseman. Another reason why I thought of no assistant coach as being defenseman is they just jammed the puck in every time they every time they throw the puck into the zone. It was like they hit like a hammer. Like when you're giving up possession of the puck as you enter the zone, it's because you have no other choice, no other safe choice. So you have to then think to yourself, well, what am I going to do with this to, to allow us to to react to this dump and I'm giving possession away. So I want to put it in a place where our four checkers might be able to put pressure on and may be able to cause a mistake, or I want to put it in a, in a position where we might actually be able to retrieve it ourselves. I, I, and I, for the first time, Lindholm on that cross corner dump made us heads up play and, and pasta was flying. It was, a, for me, it was a thing of beauty. We used to stand at center ice in the old garden because it was, egg shaped and it was really the the angles weren't as as reliable and we try to find corners that we could hit that would have the puck ricochet out front and and we did it almost on a daily basis um but so it was good to see Lindholm who needed to have a good game with a goal and that that cross corner dump but finally some some thought of where to put the puck and where to put it in a position where we could retrieve it Series even at one. If Wiggy were here, he would ask you game three. Where is Wiggy? He's, he's, got, he's dealing with some stuff. Uh, nothing bad. But he's always – that's, that's the same Wiggy every day. Isn't he? He's always dealing with stuff. Well, he always claims he doesn't take any flex time, but then he takes a lot of flex time. Yeah. I, this is – yeah. This I, is, he has it out for today, though. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, he, yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. yes he does. Yep. Uh, but he would, he would ask, must win tomorrow night at home? Uh, it's an important – it's an important game – to swing the series back, I think that's not a, it's obviously not an elimination game. Yeah. And they could come back in game three. But I'd have to say this has to be their best game of the playoffs tomorrow. Game three is, is going to be a, important in terms of reestablishing their presence and their ability to beat Florida because they gave that up in game two. All right, Mike. Thanks for taking the time this morning, as always. Enjoy the sun. All right, Mike Milbury. Um, and Bruins, game three tomorrow night with the Panthers. You can talk about that all day long here on Boston Sports Original WEEI.